Hello, welcome to our poster, Run Llama Run. My name is Stacy Cornave, and this poster was done in collaboration with my supervisors, Professor Jeremy Bradbury and Professor Michael Milianovic at Ontario Tech University in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Educational, or serious, games are becoming increasingly more common in the classroom, especially for computer science. Tools and games like Osmo and Scratch can increase learning and engagement with students while they learn various skills within computer science, like computational thinking. These games and tools can be distinguished between the way the interaction mode for creating programs and observing the solution and the outcome of what's created. We distinguish between two modes of interaction, digital interaction that occurs on a laptop or mobile device, and tangible that occurs in the real world. A tool that is completely digital, such as Scratch, is a common occurrence. Games that are hybrid, having both digital and tangible elements, are less common, with games and tools that use digital coding and tangible solutions, like robot programming, being much more common than games that have tangible coding and digital solutions, like Osmo. Finally, there are games that are completely tangible, such as board games. These games can be cost accessible if the tangible components do not rely on hardware, since they do not require the expensive parts that come with digital and hybrid tools. One of the factors that is not often thought about with various types of educational games is cost accessibility and the access a student might have to the various components of an educational tool. Within a country, region, school board, and even down to individual students, there are many differences in what can be afforded. Things such as hardware cost, software cost, access to internet, and access to a computer outside the classroom are all factors that can differ between students and classrooms. Completely digital games require access to a computer, tablet, or phone, and oftentimes access to the internet. Although many classrooms in North America have access to some form of computer, the students may not be able to access a device to practice with at home. Although these, there are some games that are free, some of these games may also require a student or classroom to pay for access. Hybrid tangible digital solutions can be even more costly, as they often require special hardware or software to work, which usually equates to needing a higher-end computer or tablet. These solutions also require additional hardware, such as robots. Completely tangible solutions can be the least costly, as they do not require access to digital devices or the internet. They can be made up of specialized hardware, which can become very expensive. However, they can also be made with paper, dice, and blocks, and other things, which can keep costs low. So we've created Run Llama Run, a computational thinking game for K-5 students. Run Llama Run is designed to be played either with a hybrid tangible coding digital solution or a completely tangible version. It is designed to use the collaborative and engaging elements of tangible coding along with the cost accessible solution associated with a completely tangible board game version. By focusing on the solution aspect being tangible or not tangible, we can assess the impact on learning because we know the impact on accessibility with it being whether or not a laptop is needed. Future work can assess the learning with the completely digital version of the game. The design of Run Llama Run was based on previous work in block-based programming in serious games such as Gidget. The block-based approach allows learners to avoid issues associated with syntax, while the logo-style gameplay of Gidget helps with practicing sequential operations and comparing between failures and successes. As mentioned, Run Llama Run can be played entirely in a tangible-only mode or using a combination of both tangible and digital play. Let's first consider the scenario of playing the game in the tangible-only mode. Run Llama Run includes the following game items, tangible programming blocks that can be printed using a 3D printer or simply printed on paper, thus providing a more equitable access to the game. In addition to being an accessible game, it has been designed to promote collaboration. For example, the tangible programming blocks are large enough that they can be used by multiple children working together, and the block shape is designed to make them fit easily together. The blocks are also grouped by color, so movement blocks are purple and usable blocks are orange. 
The current levels focus on direction and picking up, with more blocks to be added in the future levels. Level cards. Each level has a card describing the level objective, a game grid, and a hint. Children use the physical programming blocks to find a solution to the level objective described on the card. Object disks. There are also object disks, llama and a key, that can be used to simulate a solution on the level card. Children are encouraged to work together to act out the execution of a game solution. So it says, use your blocks to help me get to the key. And our hint is to use the forward and pick up blocks. So we have the llama here, so I guess we start right there. And we're going to move, want to move one forward, so. All right, let's put that there. Forward, and that will just move llama there. Mm -hmm. And the key is still one more block away, so we're going to want to move forward again. And once we get there, we're at the key. And now we can pick it up, so we need to find a block to pick it up. And that's our action, and now we can actually grab the key and we have it. Run Llama Run can also be played using a combination of both tangible and digital play. When Run Llama Run is played in this mode, you need the following game items. The same physical programming blocks as the tangible only mode, a tablet with an internet connection that can access the online Run Llama Run game, the digital game that will replace both the level cards and object disks found in the tangible only version. Once a solution has been created using the programming blocks, Children can take a picture of the solution and see it simulated in the online game. All right, so here's our puzzle. So we got to get the llama from here to the key. So I guess our first move would probably be to make it move forward, right? So let's grab one of the forward blocks, which puts them to here. So let's grab another forward block, I'd say. Yep. Um, I think he needs to go left now. Move left. Yeah, because he, he would go into the grass. And, and then right. left one more. And then left one more. And then I think that's correct. What do you think? Yeah, it looks good. Once a solution has been created using the programming blocks, children can take a picture of the solution and see it simulated in the online game. The online game will replace both the level cards and object disks found in the physical only version. When a mistake is made, a hint is given to help them progress towards a working solution. Well, that didn't seem to work. So we need to pick up the key. So I think we need to find a block for the pickup. Oh, well, looks like there's one right here. All right. Well, let's take a new picture of that. The following design principles were very important to the design of Run Llama Run. We wanted the game to be interactive, allowing students to interact with as much of the game as possible. Collaborative, we wanted the students to be able to work together in groups to learn through interaction together. Engaging, we wanted the game to be fun. Equitable, not everyone has access to computers, so we wanted a version of the game that made it possible for anyone to play. And available, we wanted the game to be free and require the least amount of resources possible, both digitally and physically. Many educational games are first designed to be interactive, collaborative, and engaging before considering equitable and available. But Run Llama Run was designed with equitable and available as the first priority, which is what makes Run Llama Run unique. Future Work aims to complete an in-class study with the elementary school classroom. We plan to focus on three main research questions. One, is there an observable difference in the completion of in-game learning objectives between the two Run Llama Run interfaces? The learning objectives will be defined based on the levels within the game. Two, is there an observable difference in engagement and collaboration? Three, did the children find the game fun and would they play the game again? We want to run the study with at least two classrooms where students are put into small groups. One classroom will be given the hybrid tangible digital version, while the other classroom will be given the completely tangible version of the game. Thank you for listening to this presentation, and more information on Run Llama Run can be found at www.searlab.ca. Thank you.